Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I like to discuss how British exports of food and drink have dropped off a cliff this year. I'll also be trying to unpick a little bit what might reasonably considered a Covid impact, what is Brexit and what may be an unholy mix of the two. But first if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So the uh, results for trade in the second quarter of this year are in which means we've got the results of trade for the first half of this year and uh, there's commentary about it from all angles as you might expect. Um, I'm going to focus on just a, a few small elements in this one. Now taking a look at this graph of G7 economies first of all. So from the baseline at the end of 2019 we can see that only the United States has gone above their line. Uh, and they only managed that in Q2 of this year. Every G7 economy crashed during the first half of 2020. That's the pandemic. It hit Japan less severely because, do you know what? They dealt with the pandemic better, as did their immediate neighbours. At the current state of play, Japan has less than 7% of the Covid deaths that we do per capita based on population. It would be way less as a straight comparison because they have a much higher population than we do and it's more densely populated. But everyone's economy suffered. Then there was a bounce back. Countries started to open up parts of their economy again in the second half of 2020. Now you can see from this graph it's the, that the UK sank lower than anyone else. Uh, we did worse by some margin our bounce back was also less strong. Remember, this is all comparative, not with each other, but with our own baseline at the end of 2019. So the bounce, you might have expected the bounce back to be much more impressive. It was not. Even now, when there's a lot more convergence of the European nations, we're still below everyone else. But this is the pandemic, right? You know, this can be put down to the fact we have a crap government. You know, wherever you stand on the Brexit debate, we do objectively have a crap government who failed to manage anything to our benefit. It's not Brexit. Yeah, our economy is less strong. Uh, I could have as a hypothesis the notion that our recovery is less strong because we are still suffering from the pandemic in the same way as comparable economies are, but that our bounce back is not the same as those comparable economies because we have Brexit on top which is weighing us down. That Brexit has stopped us recovering strongly or as strongly as others. But there's nothing in this graph that allows us to test that out. So for that we need to dig a little deeper. Someone produced an interesting look at imports and exports, uh, particularly between Britain and the Netherlands from this time. Now overall UK exports to the Netherlands actually increased in the first half of this year, compared to last year that is. Big deal you might think. Europe was closed for business in the first half of last year. Of course we'd expect to be doing better this year. Sure enough. But then you look at how that trade was broken down. So we saw increases in exports of medical equipment. Well that makes sense. We're in the middle of a medical emergency here. The value of oil and gas was also up but the price of those commodities has increased as well. But this analyst pointed out that our export of medicines dropped by 58%. Now back to that medical emergency we're having. Why would the exports of supplies go up but medicines go down? And by such a large margin, 58%. Because of our regulatory divergence as a result of Brexit. Medicines like food and drink now much more difficult to export to the EU. And speaking of food, exports of fish dropped by 40% as well. Now bear in mind, this is compared to the same period last year, when European economies largely shut up shop, at a time of incredibly low economic productivity, when we sank our trade, we were still doing way better on the trade of some items as compared to now, where the economic impact of the pandemic has massively eased. Because here's the thing, if these economic trends were all based on the pandemic and had nothing to do with Brexit, our trade would have improved on last year across the board. And it's not just fish, food and drink in general were hugely down. Zooming out from our Dutch neighbours, 
Reports cite figures that show that our food industry is worth two billion less now than before the pandemic. Now that's two billion pounds gone as a result of both the pandemic and Brexit lumped together because it's comparing with 2019 when we were still in the customs union single market, but we also still didn't have the pandemic going on. You know, our exports are down 27% on the same period in 2019. But here's the thing. It's down 16% on last year. And that's partly how you separate Brexit and the pandemic. At no point during this pandemic has our economic activity been lower than during the first wave. Like I remember during the first lockdown, for when I would drive out each week for groceries, there was hardly anything on the roads. It was like, you know, one of those disaster movies where the aliens has wiped out life on earth. Honestly, I could go miles without seeing another motorist sometimes. This has not been the case since. We've had other lockdowns. The roads have been quieter during those lockdowns than outside of the lockdowns, but they've never been quiet. There's always been traffic. The manufacturers who stopped producing for a little while or the shops which closed down in the first wave didn't do so after that first lockdown. They changed their procedures to be able to cope within the government regulations to keep going during later lockdowns. In other words, the impact of the pandemic is way lower in the first half of 2021 than it was in the first half of 2020. So if you have trade that is 16% lower in the first half of this year, as compared to the first half of last year, it's something else. That something else is Brexit. It's really this simple. It's not that the pandemic isn't having an effect. That's why our trade is even further down now compared to 2019. You know, we can't produce as much food because of staff shortages in production. That's Brexit. You know, and whether that be picking crops or working in food processing plants. What food we can produce, we cannot transport because of a shortage of lorry drivers. Finally, leaving the customs union single market means that it's more time consuming and expensive to export to our neighbours all of whom are to some extent aligned with the EU single market. That means there have to be fairly extensive standards checks at the very least. An expensive process that makes our exports less competitive. So we can't sell as much. If your product suddenly becomes less competitive, you don't sell as much of it. You know, it's a process that takes more time risking the spoilage of food, making some of these goods less appealing and certainly driving the price down. And the cost of transport, which cannot be carried out efficiently anymore, also reduces that competitiveness. Put simply, other countries are buying from us only what they can't get just as easily within their own market. And, and as Labour pointed out, this completely sinks the Tory lie that trade is back to normal. It's getting to be a bit of a running gag now, frankly. You know, in January, they denied that there were any problems with trade. No, it's all fine. Look, it's fine. You know, then the figures came out for January, a couple of months later in March. Ah, uh, yeah, um, but they were just teething problems. They went away a few weeks later. It was fine in February. Then February's figures came out. Ah, uh, yeah, there were still a few wrinkles, but it was all fine by March. You can guess what happened when we got March's figures and April's and so on. Ministers keep saying that the problems that they initially denied, oh, yeah, there were problems, but they were only teething problems. It's all fine now. It's always all fine now. You know, they kept boasting that trade was back up to pre-Brexit levels, but it never was. And whenever the results come out, you can see that they were lying. You know, and it never will be. And it can't be. We can't physically get the number of lorries required to facilitate that level of trade through our ports. We can hide the queues in lorry parks. We can keep them off the roads. But what we can't do is get those lorries through the ports in the numbers we used to to get back up to our pre-Brexit levels of trade. It's physically impossible. But there we are. We're going to keep doing this each new set of trade figures when it comes out. We will constantly lag behind similar economies because no other comparable economy kicked itself in the knackers like we have. 
So those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.